Good evening, viewers, and welcome again to Discovering Truth. And I am Pastor Forbes from the Gateway. Um, this is going to be um, the second part in this new series that I'm doing entitled Breaking Free from Containment. Um, how to break free from containment. And um, uh, we're going to use the same scripture as we used last week. And that's going to be from the book of Zechariah in the Bible, the first chapter. And I'm going to read four verses, 18, 19, 20, and 21. And I'm sure we are beginning to get a, a grasp of the story, especially how it contextualizes to our own national life. Because after all, the Bible is not a history book. It's a manual for life. It guides you and teaches you how you ought to go. It's like the manual of a product. The manual of the product tells you exactly how to use the product so you can optimally benefit um, service it can render to you. And so I'm reading from Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. And um, this was a vision a particular prophet of God had. And it's a vision that spoke and gave him an understanding as to why things were happening in his land, in the nation of Israel, and um, gave him an understanding of what to do also. And, I, and that's the relevance um, that I want to bring to us wherever we are listening um, this evening. And so in verse 18 of Zechariah chapter 1, the prophet says, Then I raised my eyes, and I looked horns, just horns, not horns attached to any ram, any goat, um, the horns were just by themselves. And I said to the angel that talked with me, what are these? What do they signify? What do these horns mean? And this is the answer. The angel answered me and said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. These horns have brought division, catastrophe, chaos, um, animosity, anarchy, all kinds of things that are opposites of what will make for national cohesion, peace, prosperity, longevity, joy, and all that. And um, then he says, the Lord showed me the four craftsmen. So in this vision, he saw two um, things. He saw four horns and then four craftsmen. And he said in verse 21, I asked the angel, what are these craftsmen coming to do? And so he said, let me explain. The four horns that have scattered Judah are the horns that have come so that no one could lift up his head. But the craftsmen are coming, thank God, to terrify them, cast them out of the horns, cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. So just a little backdrop on where we started last week in our introduction. Um, there is a principle of cause and consequence. So whenever you see a consequence, if you back up sufficiently enough, you will get to the cause. Whenever you see a reaction or a response, you do not really, um, you're not going to be proper in saying that you are um, judging a response and a reaction because a response and a reaction come from actions and causes. So for every cause it to consequent and for every reaction there is an action. So everything that we see is not just esoteric or something just dropped from the sky. There is intentionality, there is determination, there is planning, good or bad, evil or, uh, uh, or good behind it. As we say, accidents uh, do not happen. Accidents are caused, either the cause of negligence or the cause of unforgetfulness or something, but nothing just happens. Everything follows cause and consequence. That is why when we do not like the consequences we see, we must try and find out what the causes, fine tune them, adjust them, embellish them, so that we can have the desired consequences we want. Now, on a higher level, there are also things that happen to us physically whose beginnings are not in the realm of the physical. When I say the realm of the physical, I mean this realm where you can see me, hear me, watch my lips and my teeth, and know that I am speaking and watch my gesticulation. That is because you are relating to five senses. You are relating to the sense of seeing, hearing, 
tasting, touching, and smelling. And those senses are, are connected to your brain and you are deciphering uh, because of um, societal sad, you can tell when I'm happy, you can tell with whether what I'm doing is um, proper or improper because of religious beliefs, societal morality, and all that. But there is a realm also, ladies and gentlemen, that is as tangible, as real, and even more real than the realm that we know. And that is why we understand that there is life beyond this physical time that we see. It is what makes you dream. It is what makes me dream. It is what makes people have a vision. It is what brings intuitive capacity into people. They, they say they just know. You know, husbands and wives can always tell you that. You know, the husband argues. And the wife doesn't really have an empirical evidence to say, I just know, I just know, I just know that lady is bad. I just know, I just know, I just know. Because it is outside of the realm of empirical science and physics, but it's a deeper intuitive knowledge. It's intent. I just know, I just know, I just know. In the Bible, there was an old man called Jacob, Jacob as we all know him, and he was blessing his two grandsons. One was named Ephraim, and the other was named Manasseh. And according to the tradition of that time, when you were blessing the children, you would put your right hand on the older child, the firstborn, for him to have the bigger blessing, and you will put the left hand on any other child. And this man, the Bible says in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, he was old, his eyes were dim, he was about almost blind, blessed his grandchildren. So his son, who is Joseph, brought the grandsons, Joseph, two boys, and um, brought them to the father's knees. And he did them in such a way that Ephraim was placed by the father's knees, so his right hand will come upon Ephraim. And Manasseh, the younger son, was placed on the left, so the father's left hand blessing, as it were, the lesser blessing, will go on the boy. And the father, in his seeming blindness, the Bible records that he crossed his hands. In crossing his hands, he placed the, his right hand on the head of the younger brother, Manasseh, and he placed his left hand on the hand of the older brother, Ephraim, and blessed them. And when his son Joseph was saying, no, father, you are doing the wrong thing, P change your hands, he said, my son, I know what I am doing. I know. I may not see. I may not hear. I may not touch, but that does not mean that I'm effectively dead. Because the true me is spiritual. The true me responds to the esoteric, to the supernatural, to the spiritistic, uh, to the, to the um, spiritual. And so this prophet here, Zechariah, um, was wondering and bothered about the things that were happening in Israel. And as I said last week, you don't have to go very far. Sometimes you look at individual lives, you look at family lives, you look at marriages, you look at homes, you look at institutions, you look at nations, you look at blocks of nations, well-meaning, let's go backwards, if you look at nations, well-endowed with natural resources, well-endowed with human resources, have a thousand universities, hundreds of universities, themselves are good, but when they come together, the cumulative sum of them is not good. And nations like that tend to be reinventing the wheel all the time. And you wonder, it is not a dearth of resources, it is not a brain drain, it is just something that is speaking against that nation's advancement and prosperity generationally. So we have this phrase in English, you take one step forward and you tend to take two steps backwards. And you wonder why. And when you go into the demographics of nations and citizens, you find people with degrees from Harvard Business School. You find people from, from Ivy Leagues, McGill, York, Brown. You find them from Singapore, everywhere. Yet there's just something that says they are not going to go beyond this line. And ladies and gentlemen, except you live in another planet, but if you live on this planet Earth, this happens every time, everywhere. There are people who are highly intelligent, highly skilled, highly entrepreneurial, but it never turns into prosperity. There are people who can never keep a job, not because they are cantankerous in their personality, not because they don't understand team spirit, 
but there is just something beyond them that seems to incapacitize them to be able to break through into what they want. And that, ladies and gentlemen, whether it's in a block of nation, whether it's continental, whether it's demographic, whether it's pigmentation, whether it's national, is the speaking of a horn. Because it says here that the angel explained to him that these horns are the horns that have scattered the nation. Nobody will ever lift his head up except with their permission. And if anybody tries to escape, sometimes it's by their very life, or if it's in a family setting, it's by the demand of blood from a child or somebody in that home. If it's a nation, it's by a demand of blood in a nation. Nations have elections. Yet there are some nations where election after election, there's going to be bloodshed. Election after election. And you wonder why. The people who are dying, MPs, they're not ministers, they're not presidential candidates, but somebody's blood always has to go. It's as if later when you look at people, somebody makes a statement like, he was ready to die. You could see that he was going. It's like he couldn't hear what people were saying. Uh, she couldn't hear what people were saying. Sometimes if you're able to demographically check and map out events, you find that sometimes at a very, at the same point in the year, the same catastrophes happen because of the demand of a horn by what we call a covenant. You say, Pastor Forbes, what is that? A covenant is a deal and an agreement. And that's why I said last week, for each authority, whether it's leadership authority, family authority, religious authority, we must be careful because authority places us with power to speak good and to speak bad. Uh, you would um, remember um, uh, on Independence Day, I, I, I think two days after that, I was really excited when I made comment on how I saw President Jawara being honored. You know, uh, honoring him doesn't mean he's perfect. Honoring him doesn't mean that he's sinless. Honoring him doesn't mean that during his time as president, everything was super fantastic. But we honor because that is one principle that will help to break away nations from just going back. There are nations that have shed blood and they wonder why presidents came and they just murdered them. They killed them, firing squad. They killed people, killed the innocents. But sometimes when you look back, people are helpless because something is telling them to do it. Now I know psychosomatically, psychologically, psychiatrically, medically, somebody will say, oh, it's an imbalance of this, or oh, it's that, it's a hallucination. But ladies and gentlemen, we all know. We all know. If this that I'm saying is not true, why is there the fetish? Why do people go to marabouts? Why would people go and consult something? If that thing was not working in their favor, they wouldn't do it. Why are people afraid? People say this is going to happen and that is going to happen. People get pregnant and somebody tells them, tie something around your waist. Don't go in the net. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because of that reality, and it's not color specific, it's not a black thing, it is not continent specific, it gets sophisticated as you move from place to place. So you discover that in some countries, leadership is reserved for certain families and certain groupings. No matter what you do, no matter how great you are, no matter how well your campaign was, you discover that the decisions have been made not by the ballot box, but by the horns that have spoken and said, this is what we determine and this is what we demand. This further, but let me not end on that because that could be depressing. The good thing is that the same prophet that saw this vision of the horns, God showed him that there are craftsmen. And I said last week that craftsman is not just an English word because when you say craftsman, you're thinking of a joiner, a carpenter. Or so we're not talking about skilled people because this was a spiritual vision. If the horns are there and the horns are determining that no matter how good you are, you cannot be an MD. There are families around the world that when people get to a particular age or a particular stage, you know that's the end of them. There are families where, unfortunately, you can say no children 
No man ever lived to 50, and he died. He got to 49, and everybody was shaking, and by 50, he was gone. And we cannot say, now waiting God mark, we cannot say that. It's horns, it's demonic entities based on agreements, covenants. Somebody sold something for something. Somebody battered something for something. Look at slavery. Look at slave trade. It is with us still today if the stories of Libya are true. But when you go back, somebody did something somewhere. And they cannot. The descendants cannot change it until a craftsman rises up to break that hold, to break that containment and bring liberty to that family, to that nation. And people feel, well, if I'm going to be a rich woman and a rich man, I must sacrifice a child in my family. So in every rich family in that setting, one child always has a problem. It's some kind of medical seemingly problem, but it's not a medical problem. There are people who have been known to suffer incredible problems when they are within a particular demographic area. And once you take them from that area, and I'm not talking economics and money, when you take them from that area, suddenly possibility thinking, suddenly because the area where they were in, something was in control, something was in charge. We have seen it on a lesser level in terms of dictatorships. You can't lift your head. You go to work. You are not sure whether you are going home. You are not free to say what you want to say. You are looking over your shoulder because it's not your mouth. It's not that you are not a leader. You might even be in the military, yet you are scared even though you have a gun, which means that you know that beyond that bullet and that pistol, there is something that can take you out which you can't even see. And it's not a drone. It's not a drone. And so you see all this, people sometimes are helpless, but in the deepest recesses of their souls, they are crying for respite. They are crying. Even people who look like they are, they, are, they are unable to handle sexual appetite, sexual desires, um, you know, inordinate theft, and things that really do not make sense. It's almost as if... Their brain, their hand has its own brain. Their reproductive organ has its own brain. They really want to stay in chastity, but anything that passes by, they're ready to touch that person. And they become indiscriminate. Male or female doesn't matter. Sometimes even to the lower creatures, the animals. And yet, if you saw the CV of that man and that woman, you say, how is this possible? And somebody will say, it's bipolar. It's schizophrenia. It's all. But ladies and gentlemen, how many times have we gone for tests and all the biochemical and biomedical tests tell you that there's nothing wrong? Yes, there is something wrong. Everything tells you, all the pap smears, all the examinations, everything tells you everything is fine. But yet there's nothing fine. At the night, you have issues. Some people have nightmares, terrible ones, terrible ones. They see themselves in indescribable situations, things I can't even talk about on television. But as a pastor, because I deal with that, I know. And you know it's a reality. They see, they see all kinds of things. They see people cohabiting with them in their dreams. And they wake up, and it's as if it was a physical cohabitation that shows up on their bodies. And yet there was no physical person, but there was a being. There was an entity, the speaking of a horn. How great would it be when the craftsmen arose and silenced and terrorized and threw away all these horns for there to be peace? Because as long as these horns were there, nobody could lift up his head. You want to try, they cut you down. You want to go this far, they bring you down. You do all your feasibility studies, you do everything, you do your soil sampling, you do everything that the book says you must do. You fly in experts, you pay them expert money, nothing works. Because something, more often than not, unbeknown to you, or sometimes known to you because of things you did, or generational things, you find that you are locked up. But God brought these four craftsmen 
one craftsman for each horn to silence that horn in that land. And today I want to ask a few questions or maybe give suggestions. When you see visionlessness and resignation in a people, maybe in a tribe, in a country, there's no desire to dream, no desire to get out of a situation. There's very low level of thinking and believing. It's like everything is from down to up for them, you know. Chances are a horn is speaking. We call something tribalism or tribal prejudice. It could be a horn, religious intolerance. And you, you wonder. Recently, I was having a discussion with somebody close to me, and, and the person said, I cannot just understand how can somebody sell another human being for $5,000? And I said to this person, it's even cheaper in Libya. But how can somebody sell another person? How can somebody butcher somebody and give their mutilated body to crocodiles and things like that? What happened to that heart? It went a long time ago. What about group thinking? It can be a horn. or like a scenario in the Bible where you are 12 and you are sent to do a mission that will bring prosperity to your people. And people go and they see the evidence, they see the sampling, they know all is well, and they say they can. And they send that attitude around the people. And everybody believes that it's not going to work. Sometimes you find a level of unpatriotism that is shocking at the top. And, 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 and this is even classical. When people are not sitting on the chair of leadership or rulership or governance, they can see everything wrong. They can analyze everything wrong. When they sit on that chair, sometimes in less than six months, you begin to ask yourself, is this the same woman? Is this the same man? Is this the same leader? Yes, because that chair is not just a chair. That chair has its demands. That chair has its requirements. For you to continue, you might find yourself doing the things you don't want to do. And when you make those decisions, everybody says, can't she see? Can't he see? I mean, this is the wrong move for the country. This is the wrong move for the family. This is going to take the institution down. But the person is going to do it all the same because it's as if they are remote controlled by a power that is making them do it even though they don't want to do it. And when you ask them, they say, you don't understand. You don't understand. Sometimes you place, and let's say black is the right one, and white is the wrong one, and they take white. And you ask them why, they say, you don't understand, because of the demands behind them. Look at a place where you have youth wastage. You find nations where you have about 60% of the populace as youth, but you find them going nowhere. You can't focus their energies into anything productive, and you wonder why. There are places where there are cycles of violence, repeated violence, violent murder, violent rape, national destabilization, economic planning, poverty, attendant health challenges, all kinds of things, cycles. And you say, when will we break free? have that project and you have this intervention and you have that intervention and intervention upon intervention project upon project consultations upon consultations stakeholder meetings upon stakeholder meetings round table upon round table donor conference you find that we are still in the same place we have to look back and break the power of that horn by the craftsman as my time comes to an end for the second part a very little tiny example is our nation, the Gambia. Because where we are right now, you can see that there is some amount of um, breath of fresh air, buildings are going, construction is at an all time. There are big traffic jams. What seems to be happening now that couldn't happen 30 months ago? Because there was a control that restricted anybody trying to lift up their head. That is in a very minute way what I'm talking about. But next week I want to go deeper because when the craftsmen manifest their craftsmanship and scatter those horns and stop them from operating, there will be freedom. Suddenly that visionless youth will begin to have creativity. Suddenly that violent man 
is a peaceful man. Suddenly, that person that is totally unpatriotic suddenly thinks nation and flag and God first before themselves. But that means that the craftsmen have to rise up. And in this country, I know we have the craftsmen. And by the grace of God, they're going to rise up to silence the horns so that the Gambia would go in the direction that God Almighty wants for it to go. This is Pastor Fob saying, we're going to break free from containment and leave a great legacy for our children and our children's children. And the Gambia will fly on the maps of the world as the nation whose God is the Lord. Have a good night. God bless you.